Hello, fellow Bereans. Thank you for joining me. Um, today we are going to go on a Sabbath day's journey um, because that is the title of my book, A Sabbath Day's Journey. It looks like this. It is available on Amazon as an ebook or a paperback. But what we're going to do, because a lot of people just don't have time to read, um, we're going to do a video series on this. So we will go through each chapter of the book right here on YouTube for free, and you can just follow along just as if you were doing the book. Um, if you like, you can go to my YouTube channel, and I will show you that. And there's a little flip through it's called A Sabbath Day's Journey Book Flip Through, and it's on Berean Bible Journeys on my YouTube channel, and it will um, walk you through the whole entire book. Um, the book is seven chapters. So we're going to do the first chapter today, and um, so we'll probably just do seven sessions. We'll take you through the entire book. Um, the book has places for you to write notes in it. Um, if you don't have the book, just grab you a, uh, a notebook or journal or something to take your notes in. Okay, so get ready, and here we go. I'll go back over here to our other page. All right, so I'm going to take you straight over here to where I have my book up on my laptop. It is a Berean Bible journey. The Bereans in the Bible um, were said to be more noble because they searched out the scriptures daily. And so that is my goal, and that is my goal to help you do that. So if you check out here, here is the table of contents for the book, A Sabbath Day's Journey. And we're going to do this first chapter called The First. And it, the word is, the title of the chapter is accept, just accept. All right, let's go on down here. Um, the focus verse for this book is, then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So a, a Sabbath day's journey in that time was the distance that you were allowed to travel dear, on the Sabbath day. So we'll go into that a little bit more later. All right, just a little background. Um, my Sabbath journey began only a few years ago around the fall of 2017. I had never really given the Sabbath second thought before that. I was raised as a Baptist. Um, then we attended an apostolic church for a little while, which is like Pentecostal. Um, I've attended lots of different denominations through singing and um, groups, just been to a lot of different churches. Um, and I have been in some type of church service probably three to four times a week since birth, rarely missing a day. My grandfather was a pastor. He pastored our little Baptist church, so been in some church. Um, I've done VBS and conferences and Bible quizzing and Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Saturday night singings, week-long revivals, Christmas plays, women's Bible studies, you name it. Get the idea. I've been in church a lot. So... And during all these church activities, I can honestly say I had never heard anyone mention or teach on the Sabbath. Never. I only ever knew that one verse that we all learn as children from the Ten Commandments. You know, on the little felt board in your Sunday school class, you did the Ten Commandments. And we sort of maybe followed that commandment when I was at home growing up. Usually we didn't mow the yard or, you know, do the dishes or clean the house on Sunday. And uh, that was about the extent of my Sabbath keeping. And then a few years ago, I stumbled up on a little small town pastor uh, from Indiana that taught a quick 30 minute Facebook study on the feast and the Sabbath. And the light bulb came on. I was so intrigued. And then I tentatively began to explore the idea of the Sabbath. Now I cannot imagine life without it. I never got over my initial shock the first time I truly saw the Sabbath. I realized right away that this rabbit hole that I was tiptoeing around may very likely cause some speed bumps in my usual mainstream studies. In my defense, I made many valiant attempts at brushing aside this idea of the Sabbath. And inevitably, it just kept popping back up. You know how that is like you've um, talked about something or looked for something on Facebook, and then you're just pummeled with ads on Facebook, Instagram, Google, everywhere you go, 
there's something about that thing that you were looking for. And that's how it was when I started tiptoeing around the Sabbath. I just couldn't get away from it. The Holy Spirit can be rather pushy sometimes, you know. All right. So if you're like me and most modern day Christians, you probably have never given the Sabbath a really a second thought. You've most likely never heard a sermon preached on keeping the Sabbath. You've probably never heard a Sunday school lesson past the age of 10 taught on the Sabbath. It's just not one of those attention grabbing themes that fires up the audience and brings rounds of amens, right? So take a moment, if you will, and jot down all you know about the Sabbath and your current view of keeping it. Real quick, just so you can look back at this later, write down all you know about the Sabbath and what you think about keeping it. So pause the video and do that, and then we'll come back. Okay. So the most well-known scripture concerning the Sabbath, right, is found in Exodus 20. It's one of the Ten Commandments. In Jewish homes, it's known as the Decalogue, which is the two words Deca and Logos, which literally means the Ten Words. We know it as the Ten Commandments that was handed to Moses by God atop Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments are the basis for morality for many people groups. Regardless of what antichrist groups say, America was founded on these Ten Commandments or ideas. They're engraved on our government buildings and our monuments nationwide. Um, now, I'm not saying the people are perfect, or anything like that, but our nation was founded on God's commandments. Many of, you, many of us attribute the success of America as a nation to the fact that our founding fathers held this biblical worldview. I do. Um, consequently, the majority of Christian denominations, and there are over 41,000, and that's more now since I wrote this. There's more than that. And most of those denominations still see the Ten Commandments as applicable for godly people today. They are, they're not like, you know, hardcore adherence to it, but they kind of know like, okay, this is, these are the guidelines for a Christian or a godly person. Even in the most hyper grace denominations where they say that nothing you do matters, the Ten Commandments are still considered a guide for being a good Christian, right? Except, and this is the name of this chapter, except. Except means excluding, omitting, leaving out, not counting, besides, barring, and aside from. So the Ten Commandments are still considered a good guide to being a good Christian, except for the fourth. Most Christians, believe in keeping the Ten Commandments, except for the fourth, right? You may be different. So in the given space, just record the fourth commandment from Exodus 20, 8 through 11. All right, pause and do that. All right, and while we're doing this, I'll show you how I do verse mapping. So if I were going to verse map these verses, I would go over here and look up Exodus 20 and 8, just Google it or whatever search engine you're using, pull that up and find, I like Bible Hub, you can use whatever one you want, find your Bible Hub thing, click on that. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. All right, Exodus 20 and 8, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy to keep it holy. Lots, you can read all these different translations. Remember the Sabbath, seventh day to keep it holy, set apart and dedicated to God. The Amplified Bible is good. If you don't know about that one, kind of expands on the verse without doing anything to it. Um, so look up that verse and you can go forward in Bible Hub just like this. Six days you shall labor and do all your work going but the seventh day that is a sabbath to the lord your god on it you shall not do any work or your son or your daughter 
or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. And then the last verse, verse 11, says, why? For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, right? All right, and read around. Let me go back to my other. Okay, so what is your interpretation of these verses? Find a couple of different translations of these verses and study those as well. I just showed you how to do that on BibleHub.com. You can look at all the different translations there. Define any words you do not understand. And I'm just talking about looking it up on Bible Hub right here, just like I just showed you. So write, rewrite these verses in your own words below, okay? So kind of reword those maybe into your English vernacular and write those down, All right? You can pause and do that. And then we will go on. And this was my realization. When I began to look closely, the first realization I had was that most of us believe in and in endeavor to adhere to all of the commandments, except the fourth. Why is that? I honestly had never thought about it. So where are you? Do you follow the commandments? Does that include the fourth? If not, why do you think that is? Did God change the commandments somewhere along the way? Why do we think that the other nine are good guidelines for a Christian home, but disregard the fourth? All right, one more exercise that I have in here just to get you thinking is to fill in this chart using Exodus 20 as your reference, okay? Exodus 20 is where the 10 commandments are listed for the first time. So just write down here, what is the first commandment? Kind of abbreviate it. Do you think this is a good law? Does this apply to you today? And then do you try to keep this commandment? So try doing that with all 10 of the commandments. And keep that. To refer back to you, okay? Jot down your thoughts based on the answers that you just filled into the chart reflect on how and where you developed your beliefs because that's a thing that we have a lot today we've got a lot of beliefs in our head that we've just adopted from parents or preachers or teachers or television shows goodness and books we've read until we've got this belief system so you have to go back to the basis and figure out where you got that from all right, so that is the end of chapter one in a Sabbath day's journey. All right, so check it out on Amazon or eBay if you want to get the book. Let me show you what the front of it looks like. There we go. All right, looks like that. I hope that came through. So you just got through chapter one of a Sabbath day's journey. I told you it was going to be a quick study, but it's going to change your life. Thank you for joining me. See you on the next episode of A Sabbath Day's Journey.